Good morning! How are you today, my lovely students? I hope you're doing well. It's mathematics time and today we are going to continue the lesson that we have started two days ago about how to analyze a picture graph. So before learning more about this topic, I want someone to help me and read the day and date. So who can help me today to read the day and date? Everyone, yesterday was Monday. Yesterday was Monday. So what day comes after Monday? Tuesday. Well done. And what is the date? April 21, 2020. That's great! So everyone, by the end of this lesson, you will be able to analyze data on picture graphs. So everyone, mental math time! So here is the question that we are going to solve today. But remember, read carefully and slowly. Don't be in a rush. So, let's read the question together. Miriam saw four children in, in her, her home. home. In her room. Mm. Excellent. Sorry. So, what we're going to do is to circle the first number. So, Maria saw four children in her room. She wants to count their fingers. She will include herself in her cat. So, she saw four children and she wants to include herself so the total will be what everyone the total will be five so this is the first part of the question okay let's continue how many fingers are there on five children's hand so everyone let's say there are five groups children and right five children and it's in each child there is ten fingers so we have one two three four five okay so, so we're gonna put uh, ten dots inside okay so ten plus ten, ten, ten plus ten plus ten plus ten Plus 10. Plus 10. So everyone, we're going to add these together. We're going to skip count by 10. So we can find the answer. Yeah, we can also skip count by 10 tens. to find the answer. Because imagine, here's the first child, the second child, the third child, the fourth child, and the fifth child. Each one of them has... 10, Ten fingers. fingers. So what is the total? 15. 15. So let's skip counting. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 50 fingers. They are in all. Okay, so 50 fingers. So, and here we go. The problem of the day. So again, everyone. You need to read the question carefully and slowly. Think about it and try to find the answer. So let's go ahead and read the question together. Or let me say the problem. Miss Mona picked a three-digit number. So this is me, everyone. The digit in the hundreds place is greater than eight. The digit in the tens place is 6. The digit in the ones place is more than 7 but less than 9. What is the number? So everyone, to solve this question, we need to draw the table first. So as you can see everyone, here we go. Ones place. Tens place, 
tens place and finally hundreds place well done so let's go and read the question one more time and please remember the strategies we're following i need you to circle the number or numbers let me say and find the key words miss mona picked a three digit number so we're talking about three, three digit, digit number. number okay the digit in the hundreds place is greater than eight. So we will go to the hundreds place. So, can you please think of any number that is greater than eight? We have nine, ten, and eleven. Those are greater than eight, and there are plenty of numbers that are also greater than eight. There are many numbers. But let's take number nine okay everyone because we're looking for three digit number the, the digit in the tens place is six so tens place and here's the tens place so the digit number is six so we're gonna write six finally the digit in the ones place is more than seven but less than nine so everyone the digit in the ones place is more than seven and less than nine so what is the number eight well done so the answer is nine hundred and sixty eight well done good work everyone so everyone um this is a video about picture graphs and how to collect and organize data so let's watch the video together please listen carefully and pay attention here we go well, hey everyone it's mr pearson and we what we are going to discuss right now are picture graphs uh, it's a way of collecting and organizing our data now, a picture graph is a graph that uses symbols to represent and compare data. And the pictures can represent one, two, or even more pieces of data. If you look here on our screen, we've got two picture graphs that you can take a look at. Uh, and on this particular one, called School Lunches Sold, we're using a milk carton to represent the school lunches that are sold. And over here, we are using the cupcakes. We're using a cupcake to represent the number of cupcakes that were sold. Now, a picture graph has some pretty important parts. And all picture graphs need to have these parts. First, your graph needs to have a title. People that are looking at your data and your graph need to know what information you are trying to give them. Now, on this particular one, the title is Cupcakes Sold on Friday. So whoever is looking at this graph knows that the information is about the cupcakes that a store sold on a Friday. Every graph needs to have a title. Every picture graph also needs to have symbols. That's why it's a picture graph. Instead of using uh, other ways to represent the data, we're going to use these pictures. And because we're doing cupcakes, we are using a picture of a cupcake. And down here, the last part is you need to have a key. So you need to have a title, you need to have the symbols, that's the picture, but most importantly, you need to have a key. And the key tells you how much each one of these pictures is worth. So according to this uh, bar graph, the, each picture of a cupcake is worth two cupcakes. So if you look at carrot cake and you see one, two, three, and then half a cupcake, it doesn't mean they sold three and a half cupcakes. That'd be really weird. Instead, it means that each one of these stands for two. So this is two. This one over here is four. And this one over here is six. And then this half of one is half of two. So it's one cupcake. So the carrot cake cupcakes, they sold two, four, six, seven. If you look at the vanilla, because each cupcake stands for two, they sold two, four, six, seven eight and then half a one so this would be nine all together a picture graph needs to have a title telling what the data being shown is it needs to have the symbols 
Those are the pictures, and it has to have a key telling you how much each one of those pictures is worth. Now, the key on a picture graph is the most important part. It tells you how much each symbol represents. Sometimes that symbol is going to equal just one, but other times, like we just saw, it can equal two, three, five, or even ten. Sometimes they represent even more. So make sure when you're looking at a picture graph, you look at the key very carefully. Now I have a picture graph here, um, and I, we're going to use it to answer some questions. So after each question is asked, take a moment to uh, jot down, jot down your answer, and then after we go through all of the questions, we'll have the answers for you. So this one is called Books Read at the Readathon. All right, and the first question is, how many books did Peter read? So take a look at your key, look at how many symbols are there next to Peter's name, and then jot down how many books Peter read. The next question is, which students, when you see that uh, the S there, that means you're looking for more than one, which students read eight books each? Take a moment, look at your, uh, bar gra or your picture graph, and write down which students read eight books each. How many more books did Emily read than Peter? So again, take a look at your, uh, your key over here. Look at Emily, she's right here. Look at Peter and figure out the answer. And then how many books were read in all? Go ahead and figure that out as well. Okay, so the answers, here we are. How many books did Peter read? Well, if we look here, the key tells us that each one of those is worth two books. So if we look at Peter, we got two, four, six. Peter read six books. Which students read eight books each? Well, if we're looking for a symbol that is worth two books, we're going to look for those that read have four symbols. So one, two, three, four. Rosa read eight books. And one, two, three, four. Tyrone also read eight books. How many more books did Emily read than Peter? Well, Emily read two, four, six, eight, ten. And Peter, we already know, he read six books, two, four, six. So we're going to subtract ten minus six. And Emily read four more books than Peter. And how many books were read in all? Well, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. There are uh, symbols here. There are 16 symbols all together, and each one is worth two. So 32 books. That's a lot of books to read. Okay, remember, a picture graph is a graph that uses symbols to represent and compare data. And the pictures can represent one, two, or even more pieces of data. So everyone, after watching the video, let's together revise what we have learned about the tally chart. So as you can hear, this is a tally chart and the tally chart is missing the numbers in the total column. So the numbers here are missing and we need to look for them or let me say choose. We have two groups of numbers. We have this group and this group and we need to choose. So let's write the total here, how many bur uh, let me say, how many tally marks do you see? Five. And over here? Four. And the last one? Seven. Is seven. Well done. So tell me now, which one is the correct group, the first or the second? The second. Well done. So everyone, we're going to use the mathematics book, so please, I want you to get your mathematics book and to open page 545. And please remember, you need to write the day and date. So everyone, let's go to the question and read together. Use the data from the graph to answer the questions. So, everyone, we are 
going to examine the data to answer the questions. So first of all, I want to remind you, listen carefully, each picture stands for one vote. Each picture stands for one vote. So everyone, my first question is, what does this picture graph show? Favorite hamburger topping. So as we can see, four people voted for ketchup, two uh, people voted for mustard, one person voted for lettuce, and also one person voted for tomato. That's great. So let's let's write the numbers over here. Four. I need two, your help. Two. One. One. Well done. So, let's look for the total. So, here, here let's add these two numbers together. So, we have 2 plus 2. 4. Plus 4. 8. 8. So, the answer is 8. And if you want to check your answer, you can count the pictures again. 1, One 2, two three, 3, 4, 5, five 6, six seven, 7, 8. So the answer is 8. 8. So question number 2. Which topping got the most votes? Well done. So let's look at the picture graph and look for the answer. So as you can see, where's the big number here? 4. Well done. So as you can see, 4. People voted for ketchup. Well done. And which two topping get the least votes? Lettuce and tomato. Well done. So as you can see, one person voted for lettuce and one person voted for tomato. Tomato. Well done. So how many people like ketchup or tomato? So what we're going to do here is to add everyone. We're going to add four plus one. 4 here because 4 people voted for ketchup plus one. 1 because only one person voted for tomato. So what is the answer? 5. Well done everyone. So let's check our answers. Yay! It's correct! Thank you everyone for helping. So everyone, turn the page and go to page 546. So here we're going to use the data from the graph to answer the questions. So my first question is, what does the graph Show. Favorite sandwich. Well done. So everyone, let's see how many people voted. And remember, each picture stands for one vote. So everyone, let's find out how many people voted for their favorite sandwich. Well done. So, let's count. Peanut butter and jelly got three votes. Okay. Turkey got two votes. Well Grilled done. Grilled cheese got three votes again. Three votes. Peanut butter got four votes. Four votes. So, let's find the total, everyone. So, what we're going to do is to add... 3 plus 3 equal 6 plus 4 10 We add the, the sign over here so equal 10 10 still number 2 so we're going to add number 2 so what is the total 12 12 well that the total is 12 12 great So everyone Let's read the question. How 
many more people voted for Turkey and Gürtiz all together. So we're going to answer this first. How many people voted for? Turkey and grilled cheese. For Turkey, we have how many votes? Two. Two votes. Two plus? Three. Three. Sorry. Plus three. Because the key word here is all together. So what is the answer? Five. Five. Okay, this is the first part of the question. And then, okay, all together. Then voted for peanut butter and jelly. So, peanut butter and jelly. So, has three votes. Three votes plus jelly. Mm, yes. And jelly. So here, three and here, four. Four plus four. Let me write. What is the answer, everyone? Seven. Seven. Good. But now there is something you need to pay attention to. What is it? So everyone, here, let's read the question together. How many more people voted for turkey and grilled cheese altogether? The answer is five. five. Right, everyone? And then, see the word then. Then voted for peanut, peanut butter and, and jelly. jelly. Well done. The answer is seven, seven. right? Here, we're going to find the difference between these two numbers because it's written here then and then means we need to find the difference so what we're going to do here is to minus let me erase all this first I'm gonna just take number seven and five because I need to minus the numbers or these numbers to find the answer so let me erase all so we write seven minus five what is the answer? I'm going to give you some time to think about it. So what is the answer? Two. Well done. So the answer is two. Let's check our answer. Well done. The answer is two. Well done, everyone. Thank you for helping. So everyone, finally, click on the following link to play the game about how to analyze a picture graph. Please everyone, don't forget to upload your answers in your portfolio in class Dojo. Thank you for listening. Bye.